Curiosity has spurred humans to explore space, leading to many innovations in space technologies, particularly in the area of the vehicles used to explore space. However, space travel is an endeavor that demands constant innovation, like reusable rockets and landing rockets on boats. The Defense Advanced Research Agency, DARPA, the research and development arm of the US Pentagon, is looking to make space travel better by funding the research and development of the world's first nuclear thermal propulsion system NTP, for spacecraft. Why is DARPA going the nuclear way with space exploration? Will it work? Is it safe? Join us as we explore DARPA's plan to build a spacecraft powered by nuclear energy. Nuclear and space may seem like a frightening combination for many as it looks like a potential recipe for disaster. Picture something going wrong during a launch and a rocket exploding on the launch pad on live TV, with a nuclear reactor falling out and scattering radioactive materials. Another Chernobyl, right? Well, remember that DARPA is the source of a long list of everyday products that you take for granted. You were able to watch this video because of the idea for the internet that came out of DARPA's prolific lab. RNA-based vaccines that provide immense benefits to the world started life as a military research and development project. Even the duct tape lying around in one of your drawers came courtesy of military research and development. And when you use GPS, remember to thank DARPA for it. So, DARPA is people you have been trusting with your life. They are well-funded and have now turned their attention to making a nuclear-powered spacecraft. DARPA has called the system Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations Draco. Instead of traditional rocket fuel, Draco will use nuclear fission. As the name suggests, it is because the Pentagon is looking for a way to move cargo around between the Moon and the Earth, and Pentagon wants it to happen at high speeds. Think of cargo like spy satellites, space weapons, and other things the military doesn't want you to know about. Using military-speak, DARPA spokesperson Jared Adams explained that an agile nuclear thermal propulsion vehicle enables the Defense Department to maintain space domain awareness of the burgeoning activity within this vast volume. Draco is meant to demonstrate an NTP system that will work above low Earth orbit in 2025. DARPA will work with private contractors. It is not different from the idea that has been floating around for a long time. NTP systems work by pumping a liquid propellant, most likely hydrogen, through a reactor core. Uranium atoms split apart inside the core and release heat through fission. This physical process heats up the propellant and converts it to a gas, which is expanded through a nozzle to produce thrust. DARPA opted for a nuclear approach because it wants to recreate the rapid maneuvers it can achieve on land in space. That would have been a problem for spacecraft relying on chemical propulsion systems with drawbacks in thrust to weight and propellant efficiency. NTP is conceptually twice as efficient as chemical rockets because most designs use lighter gases like hydrogen that are easier to accelerate. The first mention of NTP was several decades back in the 1940s. NASA even had a nuclear engine for rocket vehicle application program in conjunction with the Atomic Energy Commission in the 1960s. However, the project was canned before the engineers could build a working rocket. The project was aborted due to the horror of the general public at blasting a nuclear reactor with highly enriched uranium into orbit. DARPA's Draco will use low-enriched uranium to heat up the propellant before expelling it. DARPA, however, realizes that Draco may never be able to launch a space vehicle off the Earth and into orbit. Its purpose is to tow cargo around that is already in space. Phase 1 of Draco will span 18 months and be divided into two tracks. The first track will produce the preliminary design of an NTP reactor and propulsion subsystem concept. The second track will develop an operational system spacecraft concept and also design a demonstration system concept. DARPA has enlisted General Atomic to perform the Track A reactor development work. The contract is worth $22.2 million. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin will independently handle the Track B work to develop operational system and demonstration system spacecraft concept designs. Blue Origin will get $2.5 million, while Lockheed Martin will get $2.9 million. Yay for Bezos, no need to go before the General Accountability Office this time or lobby Congress. Lockheed Martin says it will build on the lots of work that has already been done on nuclear propulsion to complete the job. Draco's Phase 1 will determine the nature of any follow-on phases required for detailed design, fabrication, and on-orbit demonstration. 
Whatever DARPA decides for the follow-on phases will be made public in future announcements. Like most DARPA projects, Draco in its completed form will have uses beyond military applications. It has the potential to make a transit across the solar system faster. Such a spacecraft would be ideal for crewed or uncrewed trips to Mars and beyond, even cutting the total duration for missions by half. NASA is involved in its own NTP project, and it too is working with private companies. Interestingly, all three companies working with DARPA are also involved with NASA. Lockheed Martin teamed up with BWX Technologies for one contract, while General Atomic is working with X-Energy and Aerojet Rocketdyne. Blue Origin is in the company of Ultrasafe Nuclear Technologies and Ultrasafe Nuclear Corporation, both are related, General Electric Research, Framatone, and Materion for the third contract. Each team is getting paid about $5 million and has a year to develop a nuclear reactor that will form part of a future NTP system that will basically work like DARPA's own. They are required to mature their reactor design to 30% fidelity of the final design, demonstrating that it is feasible. They will also provide cost estimates to build a prototype reactor. NASA and DARPA are aware of what each other is doing with NTP and are coordinating. In the case of NASA, it was literally pushed by Congress to develop NTP systems, going as far as providing funding even when NASA did not request for it. The final results from the three teams will be evaluated by Idaho National Laboratory for NASA. The Space Exploration Agency is accelerating work on NTP, so it could be available for human missions to Mars by the late 2030s. It is hoping to attain shorter transit times for its Mars missions. Perhaps Elon Musk will be interested. He is gunning for Mars too, with his dream of helping people settle permanently on the planet. He could decide to go with nuclear propulsion for the Starship if it proves to be faster and more efficient. And now to the big question. Is DARPA's Draco going to be safe? Can a nuclear-powered spacecraft be relied upon? To start with, modern designs of NTP do not use highly radioactive materials. They use low-enriched uranium that is even useless when it falls into the wrong hands as it can't be used for building weapons. Also, remember that DARPA is not using nuclear power in the booster for Draco. That means the uranium would not even be radioactive during takeoff, only when the spacecraft is up in space and the reactor is switched on. In the space where Draco will operate, any catastrophe will remain up there. Even in the event of the uranium falling out of Draco, the radioactivity would have decayed before even reaching the vicinity of the Earth. Nuclear reactors in spacecraft could become a reality one day if DARPA succeeds in its Draco plans. Tell us what you think of spacecraft running on nuclear power in the comment section.